Hello everybody, and welcome back to another editing tutorial. Today I'll be explaining the different types of motion blur that you can use in your edits, and the pros and cons of each one. So in this I'll explain RSMB, Force Motion Blur, which is specific to if you use Time Remap in After Effects, and Force Motion Blur or RSMB with the new Sapphire plugin S underscore OCIO Transform, which comes with the 2020 version of Sapphire. So I'll quickly go through the clips I have. In here, I've got a couple of cinematics and a POV. In all of them, I've got a depth layer, a basic depth of field, and a green screen and world layer. So to start off, I'll go over RSMB. So in very simple to use, all you need to do is add an adjustment layer and search for RSMB and add that to your adjustment layer. What you want to do is adjust the blur amount and motion sensitivity to something that you think suits your edit. I personally like to use 0.35 and 40 and turn on GPU acceleration if my GPU is supported. If I quickly go through this, you can see there's motion blur here and all it does is checks to see about movement between each frame and compensates by trying to blur the areas where there's been more movement. This however does mean it's not quite as realistic as some of the other methods I'll show you later in this video. So, Force Motion Blur. Force Motion Blur is slightly more complex to use than RSMB, but it will look a lot more realistic. However, your render times will be greatly increased. What you will need to do is make sure in every single clip that you find frame blending and double click it to get this little arrow icon. If you can't see it, click the toggle switches and modes button down here. Make sure you do this for every single clip you have, otherwise you'll have issues which I'll show you later. So once you've done all that, you can add to your adjustment layer force motion blur. You can also make sure, well, you can also have effects underneath this, you don't need to worry about that. Force Motion Blur takes that into account and the blur will still be just as realistic. Uh, once you've added it, let me set this to full so you can properly see the motion blur. And this might no be, not be the best frame, so actually let me move on slightly and I'll try and find a better frame. Okay, this should probably be a good frame to do it on, so let us pre-render this. And as you can see, at half resolution, there are quite a lot of lines and it's not blurred quite properly. To fix this, you'll need to go to Force uh, Motion Blur Samples and change this from 8 to at least something around 16. And as you can see, it's a lot, it's blurred together a lot better. If you really want, you can change this to something like 32. You can change this to any other amount, but these are the numbers I like to work with. And as you can see, there's a very small change between 16 and 32. However, between 16 and eight, there is a much larger difference, which is why I advise 16, since you get a much better render speed compared to 32 with a minimal loss in quality. To change the amount of blur, adjust the shutter angle, where lower means less motion blur. Personally, I like to use either 50 or 90, but it's completely personal preference, and I'll leave that up to you. Here's 50, and here's what it would look like at 90. Uh, I'll quickly run over what it looks like if you don't turn on the motion uh, the frame blending, I mean. So if I turn this off and go back to here, as you can see, it's gone from being blurred quite nicely to showing the lines again. And if you haven't turned on frame blending, 
what, and use Force Motion Blur, you are essentially using resample like in Vegas. And no one wants to see that. So make sure that you turn on frame blending and it will look really smooth and very realistic. The last type of motion blur I'll be going over is actually RSMB or Force Motion Blur, but with an extra effect, as I said earlier, S underscore OCIO transform. So what you want to do for this is even more complicated than Force Motion Blur. Um, what you need to do is go in to your project settings and click on the eight bits per channel you will want to change this to either 16 or 32 bits per channel um, and also alter your working space to sRGB IEC number and turn on linearize working space. As you can see the clip changes quite a lot. It also affects the colors of each clip so if I preview this depth layer and I go back to my 8 bits per channel without any working space, it looks completely different. So you'll want to be in this working space from the very beginning, since it alters the clips quite a lot. However, I won't be changing my clips at the minute. So let me turn off the depth flare. So we'll just have to go with this. However, you need to make sure you've turned on frame blending again. Similar, to, well, if you're using Force Time Remap, make sure to turn on frame blending. If you're using RSMB, you can leave this off. What this means though is you need to apply S underscore OCIO transform and click the from linear and change this to sRGB. The clip looks really weird at the minute, but don't worry, it should be back to normal in a second. Now what you want to do is add your blur, so either force motion blur or RSMB. So let me add this, I'll set this to 16 samples at 50, at a shutter angle of 50. Then what you need to do is add another S underscore OCIO transform. You can just duplicate it and put it on the end and set this from to linear and to S RGB. What this does is, I'll see if I can find a good example of this. Let this pre-render, okay. So if I get both of these and turn it off, there's a small difference, but it will basically highlight the um, the highlights of your clip when blurred will be more accented which you might find is more appealing for your edit but completely personal preference but just mentioning this in case you want to try it out. So now I'll render all of these out since I've explained them all and I will give render times on how long it takes for each clip to render out. I'll be rendering in 1440p at the usual settings I use for YouTube with the no motion blur to compare to. Okay, well I hope this has helped you decide what kind of motion blur you would like to use with your edits. Whether that's RSMB, Force Motion Blur, or your motion blur with the OCIO effect. The render times might not be completely accurate. I only rendered out each clip once, and therefore your times may vary. However, I think this should give a good estimation as to the render times you should expect when using the different kinds of motion blur.
There's one other thing I would like to mention before finishing this video about force motion blur and that is the fact that if you overlay two clips and let's just quickly apply a mask force motion blur will also be applied to the mask if you move it as you can see here if I just extend this the blur is smooth across the mask and so using force motion blur gives you some added blur to any masking and anything else you do so to quickly go over the pros and cons of each kind of motion blur RSMB is very quick to use and will give you some extra motion blur which can help smooth out your clip at a very small additional render cost force motion blur a lot more realistic but a dramatic increase in your render time especially at higher sample rates and your motion blur with the OCIO effect will also have a serious increase although not nearly as great as going between force motion blur and RSMB. So I think that covers this whole video. I'll leave some links in the description to where I found out some of this information. If you enjoyed this tutorial make sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you have any questions just leave a comment down below and I'll try to reply to all of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.